Hey guys, I hope you are having a great weekend and now we have the new numbers for September. The delivery numbers of NIO that just came out today and we need to go through them in order to assess the fundamentals of the company because this is of course very important in a time where the stock markets are not doing that great and so always remember the company is not the stock, the stock is not the company. You will have some time lags in between the stock performance and company performance but we need to have a look at the price right focus on where things are going and so let's hope we get some better insights from the numbers today as always i have crunched these numbers in my excel sheet and you can find an update of that one if you want in the patreon community by the way by becoming a patron you can support this channel going forward and support the work that i'm doing and you will get some for example behind the scenes for example footage from where i have attended a grain shares uh, roadshow in both milan stock exchange as well as london stock exchange and in the future I'm actually really excited about that next week I'm gonna be part also of the Berlin event from NEO so um, I luckily got an invite there and I'm really excited to see what will be announced there um, next week already. Now back to topic NEO announced that they have delivered 10,878 vehicles in September and that's in total 31,607 for the entire quarter and that is a roughly 30% year over year increase so that's quite good actually there and um, on the other hand this is kind of the lower guidance that they gave for the outlook during the Q2 earnings so they said up to 33,000 we could expect for this quarter well they haven't met that one but it's also still within the guidance and so well let's take a deeper look what these numbers mean. So so first of all, we don't get the full um, breakdown of the models and how many for each models they have sold. Um, but what we can say here is, for example, the ES7, they said that they have sold 1,895 cars. So that is a very nice jump from previously uh, in the first month, like just the last couple of days of the month, actually selling around 400. And then uh, the new uh, model here, the ET5, um, only delivered uh, 221 so far. But of course, this was also just a quarter end ramp. And for the ET7, we saw for the flagship sedan, they uh, sold close below 3,000 cars here. And um, that is, of course, down from 3,126 in August and also down from the peak in June, where they sold more than 4,000 of the ET7. So we know that in the last Last earnings call they basically mentioned that they have currently a casting issue and they have basically switched um, some of their suppliers for the casting and they expect that this issue will be solved um, during October. So I think this is clearly um, visible here in those cells that they have issues with the ET7 production currently. So this is a supply issue there and not a demand issue because surely they can sell more than uh, those um, 3000 ET7 currently but it seems that they have still issues with manufacturing them and this will be only resolved in October if we are lucky. So I would expect a jump in ET7 numbers going forward and that we can actually go beyond the peak in June that we had but let's see if they will actually be able to solve it by then. The ET5 didn't really start with a big bang here, only 200 cars more or less delivered. Whereas for example, for the ES7, we had a higher first initial figure here, right? But the ET7 in the first month was also a little bit lower. So, um, you know, when you start in the last day or last two days of month of to deliver cars, you cannot really expect a lot. Going forward, the question is like how fast the ET5 can actually, you know, ramp into the thousands. And there we have to consider that it's going to be a new factory. So in October, well, not sure if they can already pump up thousands of ET5 already. Um, mass production is tricky. Um, there might be you know, issues in the very beginning. They also, as they are focusing on premium to luxury segment, they cannot really afford to have like uh, lemons in there that are you know disappointing customers. So I think they will still have some issues in the very beginning of ramping gradually up there. The good side though is of course that Neo Park is open and mass producing and this also means that there is one dedicated factory for this very important mass produced um, vehicle there and the ET5 especially with the price range that's coming in uh, can have um, much higher volume than most of the other Neo models currently.
And so all in all, my takeaway from these numbers here is that you can see NEO is clearly in production hell. Like I've mentioned before, lots of models currently um, between different platforms, the NT uh, 1.0 and the NT 2.0 platform, uh, lots of scrambling to you know get those lines up and running. And then also those supply chain issues being thrown in uh, with, for example, the casting issue for the ET7 and the ES7 here maybe. So yeah, I can imagine there's lots of things going on in the background with NEO currently and that it's quite chaotic and so the result is that we are short of the higher guide um, the gui guidance for this quarter um, actually short about 1400 cars and that well might be a disappointment if you were but on the other hand let's have a look how this compares and also what this means on a timeline so first of all adjusting these delivery numbers or if you will production numbers um, with the actual work days in China um, I've been doing this graph um, in the previous uh, months already and uh, what we can see here that we now have actually a jump back to the median or the, the average that we usually have here um, this growth curve here which is um, not really exponential yet so it's just entering this s curve the famous s curve or the hockey stick if you were at some point in time but currently now it's just um, slightly going um, up this slope here but uh, we've been falling off a cliff here in the last couple uh, two months actually and now it's you know going back where it should be we could expect that this may actually jump uh, here over this line and you know go going closer to maybe 600 cars and more um, uh, workday adjusted to be delivered in the next uh, month and in the next quarters on on average hopefully but well, basically what you can see here yes it is um, you know uh, still kind of um, around this trend line here and so far still in the early stages of actually entering a more um, exponential growth curve here. Also, if we look at this graph and comparing quarters and also the competition to it, uh, we'll see that NEO is actually you know, back on track here on this quarterly growth. And um, you know, with this 30% year over year growth, that's actually what we would like to see as growth investors, right? And you can see that previously the growth has been kind of been stalling and actually even going down a bit in Q2 with the impacts of the shutdowns in Shanghai, for example. And um, unfortunately, I don't have the, the data yet in here for most of the other competitions uh, um, in 2022 so uh, but you can see as a reference here those German brands like Audi, Mercedes, BMW, how many fully electric cars they are selling in comparison to NIO. So keep always in mind what NIO is achieving there of positioning themselves as a Chinese brand in this segment that is um, traditionally owned by the Germans, to be honest. Um, and, you know, how they're outperforming all of them, basically. Um, and, well, of course, fair enough. I have to really um, yeah, add the data for 2022 there for those um, brands and see how they compare However, always keep in mind, um, you know, when comparing uh, to other car companies like, you know, oftentimes we hear about Xpeng and Liauto, um, that this is not the right comparison, at least in my point of view. And um, what NEO is achieving there at the early innings of the company is quite remarkable there. Although, of course, um, it may not be as fast as many have, uh, including myself, anticipated uh, going into this year. Now summing things up in my views those type of deliveries right now reported are in line and they are indicating also that NEOS currently still supply chain and uh, production uh, limited that is an issue so far. How fast can they get out of that? I don't know. There are issues like um, they have possibly sent many cars overseas. Uh, I think three to four ships already that are now also in Norway, in Germany and so on that may actually be sold um, you know, in Europe. But um, should we expect large sales in the very beginning? Possibly not. Um, I think it will also take time to um, ramp up Europe in the very beginning. So these cars might be you know, sitting idle and will only later on count into sales and deliveries. Then regarding um, the ET5 ramp up, um, we'll see how fast they are 
with the Neo Park. I'm not expecting too much to be honest because so far Neo is not you know being known for super fast at um, yeah ramping things up. But I would hope to be um, yeah proven otherwise. Uh, but uh, of course uh, you know I will give them the time to do that because I just think it's a fantastic product for which every piece that I can produce will be sold. And so um, you know that might take some time, but we'll see. Uh, the earlier the better, of course, for us as investors. So on a good side with such numbers and also going forward, if we now have more than 10 Ks regularly and also ET5 coming in, uh, margins are expecting to uh, get better again as well. Um, I think Q3 will possibly already show some improvements there and then hopefully Q4 if everything's going well with Neo Park. Um, well, we may have some implications there, but also we see inflation coming down. And so as more and more models and cars are actually produced on the NT 2.0 platform, that should also lift the margins towards this 25% goal. So that's something to look forward to. And then, and I will make another video on that one more specifically. Um, I'm not having too high hopes for October actually, because the issue is there's a big holiday in China. So factory is closed for some time, no deliveries in China for some time. And I'm not sure how they could actually work around this, to be honest. So let's see. Once again, I'll make a dedicated video on that topic. But for now, let me know down in the comments what you think about these deliveries and going forward, what are your expectations for October, but also for Q4. As I've mentioned, I don't think October will be that uh, bullish, to be honest, but we'll see. Um, excited to hear your opinions uh, on top of that. And so thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the rest of the weekend and see you in the next one.